Greetings. Well, a member of our ministry, Raphael, he tells me that I should do a step-by-step -step breakdown on this new technique that I'm using. And as you know, all techniques, the purpose of them is to no longer need them. But what they are is they're very similar to using, you know, step-by-step -step instructions to automate something until you automatically don't need the instructions anymore. So I'm going to give this technique a name. I don't know what name I should call it. Let's just look at the Bible here. I opened up right to Acts 17 verse 31 and it says the unknown God so before we do the technique I'm going to share with you what to do because this is the first step the first step is you take your Bible you know I use a little pocket Bible in my car because it's easy to take with me just randomly open it up and put your finger or your eye on any scripture that jumps out at you. Okay? So I opened up to the, it says in capital letters, the unknown God. Right on this verse. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Okay. You get that? So God doesn't dwell in a temple made with hands. So why do they call the church in this world the church? It's not. Church is the structure of divine love. I'm showing you how to go to church. There are some things I'm going to clear up for you today that you're going to really love. And I know traditions of men, they're so enslaving and people are so accustomed to them and they're never going to give them up. They'll, they'll grit, grit and hustle and grind their way into these old dogmatic, you know, pagan rituals. That's fine. God's not out there. God's in here. Okay, so as long as you keep going out there and to the structures of men and putting your power out there looking at all the you know the costume plays that are going on and they got the rituals performed and you eat the bread look this is all just a mockery of the truth the divine truth god is within okay i said enough there's my there's my rant but you see paul paul tells you this again and again and again and again but yet people don't want to listen Temples not made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands. As though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things. So Paul's telling you, you live, move, and have your being in God. In Christ. In spirit. You live in spiritual consciousness. That's the church. It's the spiritual consciousness of divine love. That's the body of Christ. It's fine if you want to go, you know, commune with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, as long as you know that that's not the real church. I'm just letting that sink in for a minute. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. Right there. I'm going to call this technique going to church. It's called going to church. Now, it's a really unique technique because, first of all, the first step we do is we enter the prayer closet. People think a prayer closet is an actual physical location, which it could be. You go into the closet, you shut the door, right? 
Well, instead of having to go in a closet and shut the door on yourself, what if I share with you what a prayer closet just might mean? You know how the outer world out there is the temple made by hands that Paul's describing? And we, we don't worship him in flesh because we can't please God if we worship him in flesh? Well, what do you think we should do of the world of flesh that our human eyes are seeing? Shut your eyes. Close the door. Closet shut. See? Closet shut. Closet shut. Go in the closet. Close your eyes. It astounds me at how simple this is and how everybody thinks this is ridiculous, what I'm saying, when in fact the Bible's saying what they're doing, the traditions of men, are so backwards and so pagan and so misleading people that it's no wonder nobody gets the message. Very few actually get the message. God is not out there. Christ is in you. So you shut your eyes and you go within. Go to church within. Go to church within. The truth is within, not without. Within. First step is we close our eyes. Second step is we breathe and relax. Let go. Human will is holding on to the world. It's trying to latch on. Now, relax every muscle in your body like you're floating in a pool of water. You should probably be sitting up with your spine straight, totally relaxed. Just relax, let go. Let go of all human will that's all stored as tension in your body. Now begin to do what's called a box breath. You just breathe in through your nose rhythmically, hold it at the top, breathe out through your nose rhythmically, hold it at the bottom. And you do that for a few seconds, whatever's comfortable to you. Do that for about one minute while you're relaxing your body totally. I'll do it right now. This is firing off alpha brain waves. Now we're going to move from alpha brain waves into theta brain waves. Theta is the ultimate portal to get truth into the deeper part of your unconscious, if you will. It shuts down the reasoning mind just enough for you to be childlike again in your innocence. Children from the ages of zero to seven, they primarily live in a alpha theta brainwave. Jesus said to be like the children when you pray. So put yourself into a ball of white light in your heart center. Remember, you're still in your prayer closet, eyes closed. Take yourself down, <clears throat> down in this ball of white light through your feet. Go down into the earth. Gather up the grounding energies into this ball of white light. Bring yourself up through your waist and up and out the top of your head. Imagining yourself in this ball of white light, go up and out of the building, room, whatever you're in up through the clouds, through the sky, through the dark and the light. Go through a thick jelly-like substance called the laws and go up, go up into the eighth heaven. Imagine yourself up into the eighth heaven right now. As described in the Nag Hammadi Library, you're in the eighth heaven relaxing, trusting, resting in spiritual consciousness. We must worship him in spirit, not in flesh. What is this spiritual consciousness? I'll guide you there. It's made up of seven days of creation, seven synonyms. Mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, and love. Day one, we're on mind. Mind being all, possessing all. Ideas consisting of everything that was ever created or could be created, in which God created. Spiritual ideas that are perfect and harmoniously relating with one another. Spirit, day two, all, substance of allness. Spirit has no opposite. Spirit is all. 
man is entirely spiritual because he's the image and likeness and reflection of God. The principle and the attribute, idea and its reflection. Now we go to day three, soul. Soul is the I am. It is the individualization in consciousness. It's your unique identity in the allness of the body of Christ, spiritual, intact, permanent, forever. Principle. Principle governs all. Principle is what is keeping everything in perfection and harmoniously relating. Nothing escapes principle's governance. Out of this comes life. That's day four, life. Life eternal is now. Life is in spirit. Life is mind. It is governed by principle. It's individualized in your awareness as soul's expression. So we've got day one, mind, day two, spirit, day three, soul, day four, principle, day five, life, day truth is, day six is truth. Truth is what destroys all error. It's a law of annihilation to anything discordant. Truth is established everywhere and anywhere, always in always, forever omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. Truth is is all and day seven is love day seven is the rest of love it's the settlement it's the completion of all of God's works man is eternally resting in God's love he is the embodiment of truth reflecting intelligence from mind, the light in mind speaking to him forever as the Christ communicating to man in spiritual consciousness. So now we're in spiritual consciousness. Looking past the graven images of this fallen world of material objects in time and space. That's the graven fallen images. Graven images. Now, all we have to do is return to this place and to the best of our ability to think of God in heaven. Every time something comes in discordant in our reality out there, we enter our prayer closet, we shut the door, we become as little children again, go into that theta brainwave state, that imaginative, relaxed, half asleep state, contemplating God and man in heaven perfection harmoniously relating forever to the best of your ability and according to what F.L. Rawson taught who was one of the best students ever throughout time and space that demonstrated over 500 retroactive healings using this same process when man is thinking of God in heaven to the best of his ability he is no longer sinning by turning to the world of graven images and contemplating evil namely Evil is materiality. So we turn away from the world, contemplating God in heaven, and this shuts down whatever discordant line of force is coming at you. This is how you repent and turn back to the Father. We're not trying to fix a human condition. We're unknowing a human condition. We never had anything to do with it. It's been imposed upon us. And it has nothing to do with God's creation. And now you spend the remainder of your time, you spend 10 minutes in this prayer closet every time you pray. 10 minutes you spend in this prayer closet following the exact strategy I taught you. It's called going to church. You do this three times a day, five times a day if you can. 10 minutes you contemplate God's allness from this perspective. It's probably imperative that you watch this video at least 10 times so that you understand what we're doing here. I believe this was divinely given to me by God because of contemplating God's allness. Wisdom comes to man. The proof is in the pudding. 
So whenever you are confronted with something discordant in your outer reality, you're going to cease from human action and human planning. And you're going to instead bring it into thought, take it captive, come into the secret place, contemplate God's allness, and then you neutralize that line of force. All of the tension on your so-called strings of the mortal mind are no longer being able to be played anymore. You loosen the strings and dissolve the illusion of the suffering. There is no suffering in God. There is no error in truth. Christ in you has already overcome this world. You just have to remember that you are the Christ and you fell asleep in a dream. Okay, now you can cleanse yourself off in a golden light when you're done. Bring yourself down in this ball of white light through your head, down through your feet, down into the earth, gather up the core grounding energies, bring yourself back up into your body and open your eyes. I challenge you to think about whatever's bothering in you in your life right now. It's a relationship problem, a health problem, some sort of challenge you're dealing with, whatever it is. I want you to stop humanly planning on how you're going to fix it and instead turn away from it go into the prayer closet close your eyes go to church go down into that alpha state first go into the theta brainwave come up into the eighth heaven as described in the nag Hammadi library in your imagination thinking of god in heaven to the best of your ability exactly following fl rawson's strategy and write to me and report it should take no longer than a few treatments for you to notice that either this thing is completely dissolved or it's showing signs that it's not real at all whatsoever. And as you keep doing it, you keep dissolving it. You keep doing this until the problem completely dissolves. Because it was a problem of breaking the first commandment. Whenever man breaks the first commandment, he sins against God. And then error pursues him because he turned away from God in thought. And this is wisdom, my friends. This is not fallacy, because you can demonstrate wisdom. When wisdom appears, it's provable and demonstrable. I challenge you to demonstrate it, because if you do, you'll never disagree that this is where the action is ever again. It's in consciousness. It's not out there.